Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzela K. Today, we continue to look at the case of Dylan Rounds, and we have some new documents. Thank you to everyone who is sharing sunflowers, um, you know, in the stream. Dylan's favorite flowers were sunflowers, and some people are even planting sunflowers, which is so beautiful. You're sharing it on Twitter as well in honor of Dylan's life. So I want to give you a very quick recap here. So first, let me show you this. I won't go over the whole timeline again because we just did that recently. Please go check out that video if you want a deep dive refresher on the case. So Dylan Rounds um, was last seen on May 27th in Montello, Nevada. And his truck and boots were found about five miles west of his camper. And his remains are very sadly not been found. And then we looked at this. So I'm just going to refresh our memory with this article quickly. And then I will show you the document. So they said, um, Box Elder County, Utah, a man who lived near a 19-year-old who went missing last year has been charged with murder. So there was a huge update in the case about a week ago or so. I mean, it was just so shocking to hear that this man, James A. Brenner, age 59, was charged with murdering 19-year-old Dylan Rounds. He is also charged with abuse or desecration of a body. So I'm going to read this and then we can talk more about it. But that time lapse video that Dylan's phone caught, wow. That is what, a, what an interesting thing that was. Imagine if that didn't happen. That's a scary thought. Okay, so James A. Brainer, 59, was charged Friday with murdering 19-year-old Dylan Rounds. He's also charged with abuse or desecration of a body. Rounds was living in Lucen, Box Elder County, and he went missing after he was last seen Memorial Day weekend in Montello, Nevada, 30 miles west of his home. Rounds' family believed that there was foul play from the beginning, and sadly, it sounds like they were right, yes. Just over a month after Rounds' disappearance, law enforcement identified Brenner as a suspect. However, he was not charged in connection with the case initially. He was being held in the Weber County Jail on unrelated federal firearms charges. Brenner was reportedly squatting on a remote property near Rounds' property where he operated a farm. The Box Elder County Attorney's Office announced Friday that it had formally filed charges against Brenner in connection with Rounds' case. He faces one first-degree felony and one third-degree felony for the murder of Dylan Rounds and the disposal of his body. Thank you so much, PT, um, for spoiling Fury. Uh, Coach Min E says, what was on the time lapse? So make sure you check out the previous episode I did. We went over that in detail um, based on the documents, but no, we have not seen the time lapse video. I think that would be the top evidence in the case. They just talked about it on a document that we went over last week. And they said that on the time lapse, it was Brenner cleaning a gun and he had blood on his arm and on his shirt. And then they later tested that shirt and they found his DNA on there and Dylan's. So they say these charges come after a difficult and extensive nine-month investigation by the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office and are supported by information that has been gathered and evidence collected. The evidence supports that James Brenner is the only suspect, a press release from the attorney's office read. Although the remains of Dylan Rounds have yet to be located, we are hopeful that they will be found in the future. Investigators said early on that they had found a pair of Rounds' boots about five miles west of where he lived. Charging documents filed on Friday added some insight, saying Rounds' blood was found on the boots along with Brenner's DNA. Investigators also obtained Rounds' mobile phone records, which showed him in the area where Brenner was squatting. The last signal from Rounds' phone was at a pond nearby, and his phone was eventually found in the pond. On Rounds' phone, investigators found a time-lapse video showing Brenner cleaning a gun with blood stains on his arms and his shirt. The video was taken around the time of his disappearance, the charging document said. Police obtained the shirt that Brenner was wearing in the video and confirmed that Rounds' DNA was on it. Investigators said they interviewed Brenner and he made several claims that corroborated forensic evidence in addition to making numerous demonstrably false statements. Rounds' mother issued a statement following Friday's announcement. Justin, Dylan's father, and I would like to thank everyone for the support you've shown us as we focus on finding answers in the disappearance of Dylan. Read the letter from Candace Cooley. The charges are based on solid evidence that has been released by Box Elder. We ask you to continue your thoughts and prayers for justice for Dylan. 
and that we can bring him home. Okay, so what we did, I'll show you the document in a moment. What we did last week was go over those documents as well as the latest interview that Dylan's parents had with Nate Eaton from East Idaho News. That's also linked in that episode, so you can go check that out as well. Now let's get into the new document here. Okay, so we'll do it like, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, thank you all for being here, by the way. Please like the video, share, hashtag Dylan Rounds. You can also say hashtag justice for Dylan Rounds, sunflowers for Dylan Rounds, and grizzly true crime, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Rob says his parents have been so strong through this ordeal, right? Okay, so Kathy says, hello all, where did they find Dylan's shirt and who found it and when? They actually found, it was Brenner's shirt they're talking about, that in the video he was cleaning a gun and... He had stains on his shirt and arm. They later found that shirt and tested it for DNA. So Devil's Advocate says Dylan's parents are amazingly strong. So thank you to The Docket. His YouTube channel is uh, at the Docket 71 for this document. Um, I received this yesterday. And when I read it, I'm like, where would they tell us a bit about his violent past? So I thought we can go through that because... That's pretty interesting. State of Utah, plaintiff versus James A. Brenner, defendant. This is the court case number, Judge Brandon Maynard. Comes now, Blair T. Wardle for the state of Utah, pursuant to Utah Code number 77-2206, and requests that the defendant be held without bail in this matter. The state makes this request because the defendant was charged with a felony when there is substantial evidence to support the charge and the court finds by clear and convincing evidence that the individual would constitute a substantial danger to any other individual or to the community or is likely to flee the jurisdiction of the court if released on bail. So basically what they're asking for here, sorry, I'm not sure why the mouse is doing that. Uh, there's a lot of mouse buttons there. That's odd. There you go. What they're saying is they're asking to not let him be released on bail. He needs no bail. Uh, Lex Lux, uh, sunflowers always turn towards the sun. Yes, light winds. Thank you, Lex Lux. Okay. Um, Kokoma, Indiana says, kind of new here and just asking why sunflowers, meaning thank you. So Dylan was very passionate about uh, farming and his favorite flowers that he liked to grow not as part of his farm, but just his favorite flowers growing up was sunflowers. He liked it when they got really, really tall. So his uh, parents last year um, asked everyone to plant those, uh, Rob, you're going to know the name, Black Eyed Susans, I think they're called, um, because it was a little too late to plant sunflowers in honor of Dylan, but his favorite flowers are sunflowers. So this year they're asking everyone to plant sunflowers in his honor. And that is why everyone is sharing sunflower emojis here as well. Yeah, Rob says, no bail, please. <laughs> yes. Right on Josephine says, well-deserved coffee and a hot tea for voice or energy. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so when they say here, clear and convincing evidence, in making a determination about pretrial release, the court may rely on a variety of sources, including the state's information. There's also Utah Code 77-22057A. The state's information alleges the following. The 19-year-old victim, Dylan Rounds, was reported as a missing person on or about May 30th, 2022. Fox Elder County Sheriff's deputies, along with search and rescue crews, immediately got to work on efforts to locate the victim, but were unsuccessful. During the search, deputies discovered a pair of boots belonging to the victim nearby. One boot had a blood stain that DNA analysis confirmed belonged to the victim in addition to DNA belonging to the defendant. So on those boots, in case you missed it last week, it was Dylan's DNA. So it was a drop of blood because remember at a time in this case, people were wondering, well, was it, was it blood? Was it oil? Was it another stain? What was it? It was. It was blood. And they said Dylan's DNA was on the boots and so was the defendant, which is James Brenner. Thank you so much, Kathy. Okay. And Rochelle says, finally here. Been a busy day. Glad to be here. Glad to have you all here. Thank you so much for being here. So they say the victim's phone records were also obtained, which showed movements on the day of his disappearance on a remote property in Lucen, 
where the defendant was squatting. Phone data showed that the last signal from the victim's phone was at the Lucen Pond, and a search of the pond led to the discovery of the victim's phone. That's amazing too, that they were able to search that pond, find the phone, and extract evidence from that phone. A digital forensic download of the phone was conducted and led to the discovery of a time-lapse video with a timestamp taken at the time of the victim's disappearance. The video showed the defendant with bloodstains on his arms and shirt as he's cleaning a gun. The shirt, which defendant is wearing in the video, was analyzed and the victim's DNA was found on the shirt. Defendant was interviewed and made several claims that corroborated forensic evidence in addition to making numerous demonstrably false statements. Despite a thorough investigation and extensive search, the victim's body was not recovered due to the defendant removing and concealing it. Now, he did offer to, apparently, um, according to Dylan's mom, there could have been some type of a, a, a plea deal, a deal where, where he would reveal where the body, where he put the body. But they didn't accept that because they're like, there's no way that they're going to let that man get out early or anything like that. So they're going to continue the search. So grounds for detention without bail. Now, that's what this whole document is about. His background. They're going to go into that now and why they're asking, please, no bail for this man. Not only, so they say danger to community. Not only is there substantial evidence to show that the defendant committed aggravated murder in this case, but the defendant has a long history of violence that makes him a danger to the community. The defendant was convicted of aggravated criminal mischief and threatening with a firearm after entering into a plea deal in 1983 in a main case, right, where he violently attacked his then wife. Sounds like a nice dude, huh? I know he's innocent till proven guilty. But damn, we're looking at that, right? <laughs> the red seller says, no bail, all jail. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Mark says, Dylan's parents want Brenner to get the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they say the defendant was convicted of malicious injury in a 1986 Maryland case after he shot a man in the leg. So not only did he violently attack his wife back then, but he also shot a man in the leg. The defendant also has numerous firearm convictions over the years, including felon in possession of a firearm, Maine, 1989, unlawful transport of firearms, North Dakota, 2011, and possession of firearm by a convicted felon, South Dakota, 2012. Right? Okay. Yes, so KA2Z says, as a parent who has lost a child, I can imagine what a difficult choice that was for them. It must have been so difficult to be like, okay, well, he could tell us, but we don't want him to because we want him to stay in jail and they want to um, pursue the, the death penalty. So, yes. Kim French, uh, you say, gee, love your lives. Did you see Dylan Rounds had a John Deere hat? And Jim was seen wearing the exact same hat. Do you think he took it from him? What are the odds? We discussed that in the last live stream about this case where actually the odds were pretty high for people having a hat like that in that area. That's what locals were saying as well. Farmers um, oftentimes would, you know, get those hats. If you buy the equipment like that, they might dish out some hats as well. So that's what people were saying. But thank you. Okay, so they said the defendant also currently has three cases pending with similar charges. So, damn, aggravated criminal mischief, threatening with a firearm, violently attacked his wife, shot a man in the leg. I think he's got a temper problem, this one. Okay. And then also has three cases pending with similar charges. In a Utah federal district court case, the defendant is charged with illegally possessing a firearm discovered during the investigation in this case and which he attempted to conceal. That we've also done a deep dive on and, you know, asking... The other guy on the farm, can you keep these for me? And all of that kind of stuff. Similarly, in a Utah District Court case, defendant is charged with multiple counts of possession of a weapon by a restricted person, which was also discovered during the investigation in this case and which he also attempted to conceal. Finally, in a Utah District Court case, 
The defendant is charged with committing aggravated assault where it is alleged that he violently attacked a man. So he attacks men and women, just anyone. He seems really angry. Defendant's history shows a propensity for violence and illegal firearm possession, both of which, uh, both of which are at issue in this case. This troubling history, which dates back nearly 40 years and includes numerous states, reveals a pattern of behavior that indicates he poses a threat to the community. I think we could agree with that, right? Artemis says Brenner is vicious. Yes. And Texas State of Mind says too bad Brenner was not held accountable much earlier in his life. Um, JB says, where is he at now? He's sitting in jail. So coupled with that history are at least two other factors that emphasize the risk he poses to the community. First, the defendant is 59 years old and is facing a possible mandatory prison sentence of 25 years to life if convicted. In other words, the defendant has little to lose if he is released from custody. The state worries that given his violent history, and the potential desperation of facing these daunting charges, the defendant would not be deterred from committing additional violence. Second, the defendant is familiar with the victim's family in this case. So he was not a family friend. Candace Cooley made that clear, because some articles say family friend James Renner, but he knew of them. You know, he's connected... Um, especially through the other guy that worked on the farm. He knew him, and he'd also been in Idaho for some time and then gone out there to loosen, you know? So they say is familiar with the victim's family in this case. As such, the state has legitimate concerns for their well-being. That's very valid as well. And safety if he were released because the defendant may retaliate or seek to silence them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Caroline says, nah, surely Brenner would turn his life around his life if the judge gave him, <laughs> gave him a stern talking to, right? Yes, yes, Camille, uh, Camilla, hope I'm saying it right, wasn't there already a warrant out for his arrest when Dylan went missing? He should have been in jail and this whole tragedy wouldn't have happened. Yes, there was. From what I remember, yes. And I think that's what Candace also brought up in her interview with Nate Eaton. Yes. Okay. So the second reason they give you is likely to flee. So I would be most worried about, yes, the safety of the community, but also Dylan's family, Dylan's parents. And then here they say likely to flee. The state also has concern that the defendant is likely to flee if granted a pretrial release. Again, the possible minimum mandatory prison sentence coupled with the defendant's age gives him little to lose by fleeing if released and, as shown through his prior convictions, the defendant has ties to multiple states which indicates an ability to relocate. The defendant was squatting on a property in the Lucent area and living alone in an RV, and he had few possessions of any worth. Defendant is not married and he has no family nearby. The state is not aware of the defendant having any children, nor does he have any close friends. In other words, he has nothing tying him to the community, county, state, or even the country. Yes, we don't want a manhunt situation. Lily Black 15 says he was such an amazing young man. Yes. Now they say request, uh, request for pre-trial detention. The state recognizes that the defendant is entitled to a hearing on this matter. See Utah Code 7720-2061B. After affording the defendant his right to a hearing and upon satisfaction of the requirements of Utah Code 7720-206, the state respectfully requests that the defendant be held without bail pending the resolution of this matter. That was dated the 9th of March 2023 when that was signed. Today is the 16th of March. That one, that was my birthday when this was signed. Damn. Okay. Yeah, where the wind blows says Dylan, a go-getter, he would have succeeded. And he was so excited about those seeds that he planted. He was so excited that this year was the year to really make a success of everything that he'd been doing out there for three years. Yes. Let me quickly show you this before we go. 
I just want to show you in case you haven't ever seen it. Uh, you probably have. But let's just go and look at these pictures here. So yes, Dylan Rounds, 19. He was 19 years old at the time when he went missing. He was born August 1st, 2002. He's from Idaho and his whole family is from Idaho. And he was living part-time in Lucerne, Utah for three years, which would be his third season out there. It's a 600-acre piece of land that was owned by his family. Dylan wanted to work on growing animal feed or lucerne, even in the most remote area. He was showing the world what was possible. He also worked other odd jobs on other farms, especially in between the seasons on the family farm. And his family believed at the time, this was a presentation we did before, right, that there was foul play involved. So this is where he lived. He was super independent, uh, doing his thing, just focused on farming. That's all he wanted to do. So this is just very sad, especially thinking that it sounds like Brenner has a very short fuse. It didn't take much to, uh, I don't know how to say it, but to piss him off. And, you know, Dylan's dad also spoke about that in that East Idaho News interview of like, well, he just had a bad feeling about him. Just that this guy, like he said to Dylan, this guy's not your friend. <laughs> He's a grumpy, grumpy dude, but not in the worst way. He was really angry. Where the wind blows. That's lovely. Thank you so much. And Rob says, such a young life taken from the world is just terrible. Yes. So these are pictures of him. You could see he, he was so committed to the farming that he did. Okay, we've we've looked at this complete timeline. So make sure you go check out those episodes. I just want to show you this picture. So Dylan's grain truck, um, you could see it, the arrow pointing at it there. And that's where the boots were found. We did some map time last time as well. I have a whole playlist on this case if you are interested. And then you can deep dive all the details as we've covered it all along the way. So that that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for being here. It always feels so weird when it's like shorter live streams because we're used to so many details. But that I found very interesting to learn more about Brenner's past and just how how many charges he actually has in his background and that it's, the behavior sounds very similar, even though at this point, yes, he's been charged. He's a suspect, but innocent or proven guilty in a court of law. So I really hope that above all, I really hope that his family will be able to find his remains so they can bring him home. As they say, that's all they want. Um, and I really hope that they will be able to, uh, I hope I answered your question with the presentation. He was growing Lucerne out there. Yes. Okay. Rochelle Pranzo says, details help us completely understand what's going on. We appreciate it. So, yes, I will be bringing you guys some more case coverage. Um, I want to look at Gannon Stauff's case again. Please go look at the playlist. I have a playlist for that case. Um, I just want to bring you guys a refresher and just talk about it again because Letitia Stauff is finally, her trial is finally going to happen, it seems. It's supposed to be March 20th. It's been a very, very long process um you know with having to prove a mm -hmm. mental competence and all that kind of stuff if you have no idea what i'm talking about uh gannon stauch Letitia stauch uh, that was his stepmother she uh is charged with murdering a 12 year old stepson it's horrendous so uh we have read through the entire probable cause affidavit before so go check that out uh, if you're interested already now and if you're on patreon i'll put the links there for you too and then I will see you very soon again. We've always got lots of cases um, to talk about. Thank you so much. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so that you don't miss out on the next upload or premiere or live stream or short or whatever it is I'm making for you, always making stuff for you. If you don't see me here, I've got a second channel. It's called uh, G&T. <laughs> uh, the handle is actually at Snarky G. So there I share like dumb criminal stories and we reenact troll comments and things like that. It's just a little bit of a... A lighter side of things, I suppose. You can go subscribe over there too. And other than that, I will see you guys um, very soon. Texas State of Mind says, have a great night. Thank you so much. And lastly, if you didn't see my Ellen Greenberg episode that I released earlier today, please go check that out um, as well. If you could like it and share it, hashtag Ellen Greenberg. That'll be very helpful too. All right. Thank you so much, Mars. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.